Hey friends, welcome to Generation Tech, and this is the second part of the Galactic Empire versus the Borg. A fleet of 5,000 Star Destroyers and the Death Star have engaged a 6,000 strong fleet of Borg cubes. After an initial victory, destroying a Borg space complex with the Death Star's super weapon, the Borg are now on the counterattack, and the Imperial fleet is overwhelmed. The Death Star still hasn't recharged for another shot, and Star Destroyers are getting destroyed. A Borg away team beam directly onto the bridge of Vader's Executor Super Star Destroyer and start assimilating the crew before Vader's eyes. Vader, for the first time since becoming a Sith Lord, starts to feel just a little bit of fear. And you know what fear leads to. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. The suffering of hundreds of Borg drones. Vader knows what he has to do. Vader rampages through the ship, taking out Borg drones with a viciousness that eclipses all of his previous mass killings. The Sand People, the Younglings, the Separatist Council, the Rebels. Borg drones are decapitated with their heads bouncing along the floor, being kicked around like footballs. Their technology-infused bodies are crushed by Vader's force power and flung up into the air. The Borg are completely unable to adapt to Vader's lightsaber and his use of the force. As Vader rampages through the ship, the crew work to close any gaps in the shielding and modulate shield frequencies so no more Borg drones can beam aboard. However, there are already 1,000 Borg on the ship. Vader has his work cut out for him. On the bridge of the Death Star, Tarkin starts feeling a little hot. He asks for an environmental report, and crew members tell him that the bridge has increased in temperature by a few degrees, but the bottom 50 decks of the Death Star are now at 39.1 degrees Celsius, or 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and 90% humidity. He knows something has happened, and there's only one possible explanation. The Borg must have beamed aboard and started assimilating the station. Tarkin orders access to all tactical systems to be restricted to the bridge, which is located just above the super laser dish. He then orders several thousand stormtroopers to go down to the lower 50 decks and engage the Borg, who still have about 200 decks to climb before they can reach the bridge. You see, when the Borg detected the super laser charging up to take out their space complex, they managed to match the Death Star's shield frequencies and transport about 50,000 drones, the Borg Queen, and some equipment aboard the space station. They've already accessed the computer system and downloaded the owner's manual, so they know they have to get to the bridge to take control of the super laser. They're assimilating the station at a rate of about one deck a minute. Meanwhile, aboard the Executor, Vader is taking a break from the killing when he receives a distress call from the Death Star. They are evacuating all non-essential personnel, and the Executor is expected to receive shuttlecraft. Vader knows he has to make his ship safe, so he resumes hunting down the remaining Borg drones. Meanwhile, the Executor's crew inform the Death Star how to modulate shield frequencies to stop the Borg beaming aboard. Aboard the Death Star, the Borg are now advancing at a faster rate, about one deck every 30 seconds. They'll be at the bridge within an hour. Tarkin starts to feel that he is losing the battle, his beloved Death Star overrun by a superior enemy. He starts thinking back to his childhood on the planet of Eriadu, and his combat training against wild predators on the Carrion Plateau. There was one time where he lured several wild beasts into a clearing in a forest by laying meat on the ground. When a sufficient number of beasts had entered the clearing, he detonated several charges buried just below the grass. With the majority of the herd destroyed, any beasts on the periphery ran in terror. Tarkin hesitantly tells his commanders to allow the shield generators in the lower hemisphere of the Death Star to fluctuate, leaving openings in the shielding where the Borg can beam in. Thinking it's a technical malfunction, the Borg take the bait, and hundreds of Borg cubes start to converge on the Death Star's position. Now Tarkin realizes that the super weapon has recharged, but it's no good against small scattered targets. He takes a shot anyway and destroys a couple of Borg cubes that just happen to be in the path of the beam. But it's more of a demonstration to let the Borg know the weapon is still active and they should come and claim their prize. By now, about 2,000 Borg ships have surrounded the station, and 300,000 Borg drones have beamed aboard. Crew members are fighting to escape before the shuttle bays in the central trench are overrun by Borg. Vader sees what is happening, and although Tarkin hasn't broadcast his plan to the fleet to avoid interception of the signal by the Borg, Vader can feel a massive amount of anxiety coming from the Death Star. Tarkin and his crew are afraid of what they are about to do. 
Vader knows a massive explosion is coming, and orders all ships in the fleet that still have working hyperdrive to jump to a distance of at least five light years away. Tarkin sees the fleet leave on the main viewer, and without thinking, orders the crew to begin a 20 second countdown to self-destruct. In the depths of the Death Star, the Borg Queen realizes what is happening, and utters some not too unfamiliar words. It's a trap! Obviously in a slightly more feminine voice than that. There's now only 10 seconds left, and a warning of impending doom travels through the Borg's collective consciousness. A few dozen ships furthest away from the Death Star manage to go to warp, but for the majority, it's too late. The countdown reaches zero, and... The Death Star's hypermatter reactor explodes, ripping apart the station in a massive explosion, and taking 2,000 Borg cubes with it. The Borg cubes on the periphery are caught in the shockwave, and many are disabled and start drifting in space. With the Borg Queen dead, the collective consciousness is severed, and the remaining operational cubes go to transwarp. As Imperial reinforcements arrive, they start a cleanup operation, destroying disabled cubes drifting in space. The hardest part of the operation is clearing out the forest moon of Endor that's infested with Borg Ewoks. Many stormtrooper lives were lost. In the end, the Emperor orders the construction of a second Death Star to completely destroy planets whose populations have been assimilated, such as Naboo. See ya, Jar Jar. The confrontation ends in victory for the Empire, but at great cost. The death of Grand Moff Tarkin, the destruction of their brand new superweapon, and over a thousand Star Destroyers, either destroyed or disabled beyond repair. Oh, and rebel scum choose to take advantage of the situation and destroy a few Imperial outposts while the fleet was distracted. So guys, what do you think about how this played out? Do you think the Empire could really defeat the Borg? Leave your comments below. There was a cool video out a few weeks ago by Eckhart's Ladder, the Death Star vs. the Borg Cube, which gave me inspiration to make this series. I'll put it on screen in just a moment. Do go check it out if you like it. Leave him a comment, let him know Generation Tech sent you there. As always, if you're new, please subscribe to our channel, give this video a like, and if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.